Hello there and welcome back to my videos. In this video I want to speak about my new project called Component Locking. And what I want to use this for, it's uh, I'm st still creating my own website, I have rebuilding that. And uh, then I'm creating the dashboard and I'm missing something to locking like when I'm updating a, a curse and uh, then I'm updating a post from, from my blog and something like that. That's what I'm needing and uh, I think that's why I'm need to build this component logging so I can have a central place to place all my logging and I can define which project is coming from and which environment is running on. So that's uh, that's what we're gonna do today. I will uh, make a very basic one and uh, building up the, the ground code for, for this project called the uh, component logging and I really hope you appreciate this component and you can use it as free as you want. Remember I will make a, a, a Docker hub image so you can just pull it down as a Docker or you can go in for my GitHub, the link will be in the description, and then you can basically just uh, download the code, re, uh, refactoring it if you want, and then push it to a production environment. It's uh, completely free, and I really hope you want to subscribe to this channel. You can do it by clicking on the link below, and then you will subscribe to this channel, and you can get all my videos when I am uh, publish out something new. Thank you, and let's uh, go ahead and starting with the, this project. The first thing we're going to do now will be to pip install the flask and the mongo engine and the python.env. So let's do this and say pip install flask and uh, pip install mongo engine and then we need pip install dot, uh, python dot env. I know we can uh, install everything but one liner but I, when I'm showing up I really love to show exactly what I'm doing so you understand what's happening and then it's not just in going for like, whoa, one one line and then we install 1000 packages. I don't like that, so that's what we're gonna do now. And then I will say pip freeze. So we will update, we have the requirements uh, text file here, it's, it's empty, you can see. And then I will just fill it up here and add all the the package we are using. You can see we have installed Flask and Mongo engine, this will be here, and python.env. It will install the sub packages like click, and uh, it's dangerous and ginger. Ginger is using for Flask, and I think click and it's dangerous too because it's coming from the same developers, and the markup safe will be the same. Mongo engine will install the Mongo, uh, PMongo, and uh, Flask will install this too. And dot environment, it's just the only uh, package itself. When we have this installed, I will uh, creating the the app file here. It's called app.py. And then we are ready to basically uh, starting up the application uh, up if you want to type uh, Python app. And that's nothing response because we don't have anything inside right now. Before we continue, I will create the Docker file. So we are ready to push it up for Docker when we are finished. And I have the first beta version for you. And then, yeah, I'm not public uh, release uh, version one first. So I will think. Uh, over time I will create betas and then you can just download the last beta and if you see this uh, in the future then you probably have the version 1 maybe. So that's what you're gonna do. So let's create the docker file up here. Right click and say new one and say docker file, docker file up here and um, I will say from python and I will use python 3.8 in this clip and I will use alpine Linux because it's much faster than normal to, to running. I will say expose port uh, 5000 on the TCP. We want to work there. Should be the app how we will place our application. Then we will copy the requirement file inside and we will just copy it inside to the app folder. Then we want to say pip install and we will say no cache. Uh, no cache here, and then we want to read the requirement files. I'll just copy this one up here, um, and that's it. And copy everything we have in the folder into the the folder here, and we'll just say run, and we will remove if you have any environment files running because we don't need that. We need to running the system environments when we're running inside the dog. Then we want uh, the command. And what we're gonna do now is say we run to Python and then we want to app pi. 
and then the docker file here whoops i need to come here and then the docker file is completely finished and we are ready to to going for the right uh, side of the code so let's continue for this so let's going back for the app.py and then we need to say import logging and logging is uh, the internal uh, logging system it's not my component so we will use this to display something for the for the terminal when we use this and then we say from flask import flask and uh, then we gonna say from uh, logging basic configuration and I want to say level should be logging debug and the sound you can hear in the background uh, it's my it's my baby it's a uh, it's my turn to take it over and I think it's uh, be nice to recording some video when my baby is in the room but the, the sounds could be very funny sometimes so I really hope you you accept that sorry for the funny baby sounds in the background I'll try to record this as good I can and then we have an app here and say flask and name is equal to this and we say app uh, vgsgi app is equal to here we want to say the db db connect i'll come back to this and uh, then we need app at your rule and the first one we want to build should be a logging and view function and here we want to own funk and the name for this endpoint should always be unique so i'll call it uh, logging and then get and method for this should be get and then the uh, single thing we need here should be name and uh, is equal to main and then we go inside here and say app run and should be always running when you're running it it should always be accepted in the remote and on port 5000 and debug is true I think we can uh, change this so we can go inside the terminal and, and then uh, enable and disable the debug and based on that we can change the uh, level of the debugging block but uh, that's what we're going to do now and uh, let's go in and creating up the the next one should be the system environments and this should be dot env and inside the, this one i want to say mongo database and component should be component logging and then we need the mongo host should be this one because my local environment and then we need the mongo port should be 27017 and the mongo username is empty my local machine here on on the windows should did not have any kind of users because i only use it when i'm recording and testing stuff so it's not running in the background as normal here yeah, that's a very funny sound here but yeah um the password should be empty and uh, i'll just say that if something is running up you can just say this one and if you're thinking i'm looking on on a second screen uh, I'm, I'm just looking on the right side of my uh, ultra right screen and um, then, then I have my word document where I have typed everything down so I can remember that so first I'm using a lot of time to, to test it up and then I'm put it into the document so I can record it up with the minimized of the error so when you see my videos it's, it's so perfect as I can do that I know sometimes I like making a box and that's the part of recording something because I only have the source code on the right side what I'm saying is coming directly from my heart so that's why I'm something uh, sometimes look like a question mark because then it's reacting on the different way as I expect so let's make one more here say we say the debug mode and then we just say one and we can go back for the app here and say uh, if uh, OS um, get environment debug mode is equal to uh, one and I'll just pass this as int I'll uh, forecast this and then we're going to say the bug level should be inside here and import OS and then we're going down here to say that 
uh, git system environment debug mode true if uh, is equal to one else false and uh, we cannot forecast this because this it's required always but we can do something else we can say the debug mode is equal to one if it's equal to one else zero and then we can do, do this and we can even do it more easy for us we can just do this and this and say true or false then we have the same same stuff and what I'm gonna do now it's uh, if we're going inside this one and say zero we can just say Python no we cannot say that it's gonna make an error because we don't have uh, put everything inside no it's not okay the D the debug mode is uh, it's off and uh, that we don't want that because we having inside and say if this is one I will just see what happened here and say um, print and let's see what happening I'll just quit it and say this one and it's none because we cannot uh, get the system environment and uh, that's some sometimes we need that I can go inside and say that and say import dot env and then dot env load dot env I think that's enough yes now we can see the debug mode is on and if I'm going inside to the env file here and say zero then it should be off when we are yes so now it's reacting and we only the, enable it here and uh, and because we need this dot env inside the the app file it's because we only uh, loading automatically the python dot env inside when the flask is running so when we go inside the flask application we have access for everything but before the flask application is running we don't have access to anything so that's why we we want to do this so that's the the main file here and we basically have created the the environment file so we are ready for for the next step that should be about the i think that should be the the database connector so we can building up the mid mid middleware i don't think we need to go for the middleware right now um i know i say that but uh, i can see on my recording time it's, it's taking a long time so just to give you a chance to getting better understanding what's happening and you don't need to see the full movie you can just jump around uh, about the stuff so i will just uncomment the middleware here and then i will get focus on to create the basic function ready first and for this we need to create a new file new python file it should be in the library and the library i will create a folder called flask and uh, then i will say logging inside the logging here i will create the flask logging fl uh, class Flask logging, that's my word about how I uh, define stuff and how to create it like a static method and call it diff git. And what we're gonna do inside here should be uh, when, when I'm using the postman and making the request to my component logging, then I will just uh, get response back and it should be in status okay. That's what I, my idea for this. So to complete this, I need to uh, import. Uh, logging because I need to send a login in the background and I'll say the from flask import uh, response and then I will say from um, basin json util import uh, dumps that's what we're gonna do here and I'll just say return response and the only thing I need to do now is just say this one and say status Status should be okay, and then I need to define what's its uh, return like. It uh, should be meme type, meme type, and this should be text JSON. That's what we're gonna expect, and we want to respond about two hundred. 
And then we basically have it uh, done, but I want to say logging and just say info. Should we say debug? Yeah, debug should be. I would think that would be fine. So I'll just say we get request start. And then we don't need anything else. Request hit. And uh, then we're going for the app here. And uh, then we just say uh, here from no we're going down here and say from uh, from library import flask import logging import flask logging and down below here I can just say flask and get and then we have everything inside if I'm restarting the application and going for my postman you can see it here it should be sending it it's returning like okay and if I'm going back then you can see the uh, flash locking is, is requested so that's everything for now and in the next video I will make the middleware about how you can connect with the Mongo uh, by flask and uh, then I will build the uh, ODM from my from a Mongo engine so you can see how the structure in the database will be for the locking component so that's uh, that's yeah that's that's it and thank you so much to to watch this for the end I really hope you uh, to subscribe to this channel, you can go in the right corner below and press on the thing, and then I'll appreciate that. And um, if you have a comment, please make it in the comments fields below. If you have any idea for this component or just giving me feedback, I would appreciate that. And thank you so much for that. And thank you for watching this. And remember, all the code will be on the GitHub. And remember, I will build uh, soon. I'll build uh, a Docker comp Docker image so you can just uh, download uh, from Docker. Thank you so much to have you here today and thank you uh, to watching this video. Hope to see you next time. Bye.